The media, especially the English speaking media, I don't know much about vernacular media or the Hindi media, is very heavily biased, was very heavily biased against uh, Modi and is still heavily biased. I think this is a, a heritage of the past. If you notice that now, uh, whenever there is a, the Muslim is a victim, uh, the media really, really plays it up. And as it should, uh, I, I have no objection to that. But what I do have an objection to is that when a Hindu, when a Muslim commits uh, an equally violent act, it doesn't get much appearance in the media. Hello and welcome to Outlook Bibliophile. Today we have Ace Economist, fanatic cricket fan and uh, a movie buff, uh, <laughs> Surjit, Dr. Surjit Bhalla uh, to discuss his new book, Citizen Raj. Surjit, uh, you know, you were one of the really brave ones to call the elections uh, much before even mm. the exit polls and, mm. uh, you know, uh, the talk about around it started and you got it pretty close. Uh, uh, I mean, can you tell us what is it that you knew that we didn't? Well, um, as you know, uh, I've been working on elections for the last 25, 30 years and forecasting elections. Some you get right, some you get wrong. Um, but I, I must uh, emphasize that when I made the forecast, I was very nervous. I hmm. um, checked with the editor in the end of January that at that time it, the consensus was the BJP on its own would get 180 seats to 200 seats right and there was all this talk about who will take over Modi will not be PM and so on and so forth and I was getting the results which I put forth in the book that the BJP would win on its own uh, without any help from any of the allies um, right. so um, how did I get it right so that was first I was nervous mm -hmm. I was unsure the conventional wisdom was completely um, as you know, I've been working on this and I have, I don't do my forecast based on opinion polls. I do my forecast based on analysis of historical data and, you know, the swing model, uh, which is the uh, standard uh, forecasting model. It may be a bit uh, late to ask this now, but you know, when you were traveling around the country uh, just before the elections, did you sense this uh, Modi wave? Uh, I mean, at least of, of this strong wave? I did. Um, and we talked about it. Mm. Um, and especially in UP, um, that what one saw was that everybody we talked to, a lot of the issues that uh, people thought would play a very strong role uh, were not playing a strong role in the mm -hmm. in the travels that we did both in West Bengal and in, in UP uh, more in UP uh, so what were the factors that we thought uh, would really play out a lot uh, one was Balakot and while national security was an issue but relatively a minor one mm -hmm. um, what people talked about were cows, uh, yeah. free wheeling cows, yeah. um, and how they were all badly affected. And people were talking about how they actually saw benefits mm. to themselves from the Modi regime. That, and you know, these are poor people. We are not talking about you and me. These are poor people who actually, the benefits that were meant for them for the first time they were seeing this. So mm -hmm. we saw that whether you were voting for the Congress or voting for the BJP, they all mentioned that yes, their lives had improved, whether it is chulas mm -hmm. or whether it is toilets. We yes. saw so many toilets. Uh, places were relatively keen. You know, you mentioned as in, the, in your travels, uh, one of the issues you th thought was uh, important was about the cows. In fact, you spend a whole chapter in the book yeah. about, you know, the cow politics. So why is it that, uh, you know, soon after re-election, you know, the main news, not main, uh, a, a few new, uh, tidbits of news that we have heard again is about lynching and, you know, this cow vigilante. You, I mean, you argue so well in the book that this is not going to work. Mm -hmm. Why are they, I mean, why is it still, uh, uh, you know, on the national news? Okay. Um, that's, you know, there's a deeper question there, Satish. And I, if you know that in my book, I also 
discuss about riots yes. and what has happened in terms of um, crimes against individuals, crimes against communities, riots, etc. Look, I think, uh, so my short answer to that is that the, in my view, and I also discuss it quite openly in the book, that the media, especially the English speaking media, I don't know much about vernacular media or the Hindi media, is very heavily biased, was very heavily biased against uh, Modi and is still heavily biased. I think this is a, a heritage of the past. If you notice that now, uh, whenever there is a, the Muslim is a victim, uh, the media really, really plays it up. And as it should, uh, I, I have no objection to that. But what I do have an objection to is that when a Hindu, when a Muslim commits uh, an equally violent act, it doesn't get much appearance in the media. So I think either this is a heritage that, we, you know, they are a minority. Um, I think, they, as I mentioned in the book, they have been discriminated against whether it be education or various other forms. And maybe that's why the intellectual uh, media community feels that it needs to bend over backwards for them. I don't know. But you know, to be coming back to specifically about these lynchings, what you are saying is that the media plays these things up, correct? I mean, uh, yeah. at least a section of it. Uh, but you know, uh, I think a part of the media also feels that you know, the condemnation of something like this is not strong enough. You know, from the uh, from the government, you know, from uh, Mr. Modi, uh, that there is that feeling uh, too. Yeah. Okay. And let me break that up. It's a very important question. Let me break that up in in two parts. One is condemnation by the party, by officials, whether bureaucratic or politicians, and the second is condemnation by personally by Mr. Modi. Uh, on the latter, that is condemnation by Modi himself, I think I have argued in my columns, etc., that it is a bit unfair or a bit incorrect or whichever way you want to call it, that Mr. Modi will be, should comment on any of these because he's going to get himself into a trap, sure, yeah. which he's avoided. Yeah. The second part, however, for the, um, for the party, for officials, etc., there should be condemnation of the highest order. Mm. So, I think, uh, and that is also now improving. That is, you're beginning to to see the condemnation, etc., from responsible uh, officials. Mm. You saw Gautam Gambhir. You're the cricket yeah. fan. I'm a cricket fan. I mean, fan. you know, in the end, it's in beginning the, to happen. In the end, actually, it is a law and order situation. It's a big, law and order problem. It's uh, yeah. I mean, it, you know, the uh, the police and the, and the authorities should just sort of put a stop to this. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And actually, that's absolutely right, Satish. I mean, it is a law and order problem, and there's no excuse. Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, yeah. Sai, whoever is there. That is irrelevant. You know, the, the another uh, sort of a contrarian uh, viewpoint or a, or, a, or a theme that is there in the book which I found, you're, you're saying that uh, RSS actually does not help BJP get votes. Yeah. How is that? The RSS was a strong force or would have aided the BJP in the past prior to Mr. Modi coming on the scene. I see. And I think it is the Modi effect, and I try and give estimates as to how many extra percentage points Modi as a leader mm. uh, of the BJP uh, helped the BJP uh, itself. So if uh, the counterfactual is if Advani had run the 2014 election, and we all speculated on that, um, the BJP wouldn't have got as many votes number one and number two the data by caste etc may have shown that the rss is coming in and helping the bjp but i i really think and this is an important part for all of us to understand and which i keep in emphasizing whether it is economics or cricket or politics india has changed and we have a lot of our old bits with us uh, we never had fast bowlers before. 
um, yeah. and now we have one of the best fast bowling attacks. Did you ever think that was possible? No, but that's how India has changed. 